Brilliant, yeah, so, so I'm Andy, and I've had a great week this week. We've had so much fun uh, with the football and the creative stream, and we've learned so much about Jesus, this king. We've seen Jesus the king come on a donkey to show what kind of king he was, a real king, in a real city, a real point in time, but not like a normal king, a king that is gentle and humble. We've seen that we're not perfect, and that's the standard to be on Jesus' team. We're always going to fall short, but Jesus has a wonderful response. He chooses to die for us on the cross, to take the penalty, the punishment for our not perfectness, so that we can be on his team and part of his kingdom. And better than that, he rises through death. He comes through death and out the other side, rises back to new life, that we might have eternity, forever, living with him. But my question for all of us this morning is, does any of that actually matter? Does any of that actually matter? Does it matter if we go back next week, we go and carry on with our lives as normal? Or does it matter if we do that or we'll keep thinking about Jesus, keep wondering who Jesus is, maybe even choose to start following Jesus? Does any of it matter? Does it make a difference? Jesus tells a story that, about why it matters. So let me read that, it's very short, let me read the story to you. Jesus says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, those words of Jesus, everyone who hears these words, and puts them into practice. They're like a wise man who builds their house on a rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, but it did not fall, because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine, everyone who hears Jesus' words, and does not put them into practice, is like a foolish man who built their house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, and it came down with a great crash. So we've got this story of two men building two houses on two very different foundations. So I think it'd be fun to have a go ourselves. So do you think you can help me? That'd be brilliant. So in a minute, I'm going to need four volunteers, four volunteers to kind of help me. They're in the in a minute. Great. I mean, so four, four, four children who want to come and help me out. Uh, yeah, the line. Joel, as well at the back. Uh, anybody from this side? Yeah, go on. Uh, go on, Charis, Charis, and Lucy. Okay. I should have boys versus girls. So, so Glenn and Joel, can you come to this side of the table? And Lucy and Charis on this side. So in a minute, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to use those bricks to build the strongest house that you can build. 30 seconds to use those bricks to build the strongest house that you can build, starting now, yeah, you build a house and then you put them there in there. 30 seconds.
in your resurrection. My hope is in the fact that you came through death and out the other side. And if you do that, if you make Jesus your foundation, then when bad things happen in your life, when circumstances get tough, when the world around you goes horribly wrong, you know that you have the king of the world who loves you on your side, with you, whatever's happening. When you mess up, when you make a horrible mistake, you know that there is forgiveness at the cross if you turn back to God. And even death, even death can't destroy your life if you build it on the foundation of Jesus, because Jesus has destroyed death by dying and rising against new life. So your, 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 your life is a bit like this, okay? Whatever happens, whatever hits it, whatever keeps on... It's going to stand. Your life's going to stand if you build it on the foundation of Jesus Christ, okay? But what if you don't? What if you choose something else to be the foundation of your life? What if you make something else your ultimate concern, the thing you're most bothered about, the most important thing in your life? Why do you do that? Well, the thing is, the house, your life might well feel totally fine from the inside, okay? There's nothing wrong with the house, right? The, the, the passage tells us they built two houses. There's nothing wrong with the house that the guy built on the sand. You might be able to hit the walls, touch the ceiling, check the roof. The house would be totally fine. Nothing wrong with the house. The problem is it's built on the wrong foundations. So your life's going to feel fine. But then one day those foundations are going to slip from underneath you. It might be that one day you go for that, you go for a trial. You go for a trial to play football at the next level, that next tier up. And they read out the names at the end of the trial to say who's been invited back, your name isn't on the list. You put everything into football and suddenly it's gone. Or maybe it's great. In a few years' time, maybe you're going to be there, you're going to be opening that paper on GCSE day or whatever. <sighs> what do they now? Well, maybe. Maybe it's the when you're, when, you're, when you're there with your kid or your son and they read out the names of the child and his name's not on there. That's what it's going to hit. Maybe it's when you're going to ask your son or your daughter, what did you get there? That's when the foundation's going to slip away from you. Or maybe. <laughs> It's going to all be fine, but ultimately death will destroy your life, right? Jesus can take you through death, but death will destroy your life. So one day, or one day, sooner or later, your life's going to come crashing down. That's why it matters. That's why it matters whether what we do with Jesus, whether we accept him as king, because if you do, if you do let Jesus be the king, then your life is on a sure foundation. Your life is on a sure foundation. Whatever comes, you have a king who loves you. You have a king who died for you, and you have a king who's gone through death and burst out the other side. So as I close, I don't know what you make of all that. Maybe you're just thinking, hang on, those are massive claims. It's a massive thing. To say that Jesus is the only secure foundation for me to build my life upon. All I can say to that is two things. One, that's, that's all, I'm, all I'm doing is saying what Jesus says. Jesus says, Jesus, is, these are Jesus' words. He says the only foundation you can build your life upon is Him. Otherwise, it will all come crashing down. It will all slip through your fingers. But the other thing to say is keep thinking, keep questioning, keep asking. Um, you might, you might say, this, this little book here that I was reading from, this is, this is called the book of Matthew. It's written by a guy called Matthew who walked around with Jesus for three years and wrote down what he saw. This is an eyewitness account of what the king of the world really looks like. There's loads at the back. Do so you take one away, totally free. And see what you think. Does this look like the king you might want to follow? And also, obviously, every Sunday we're here, this time at 11 o'clock, 4 o'clock as well. What we're, what we're doing here, why are we here? Because we want to, to grow to know and love Jesus together. To learn more about him, to help each other, encourage each other in following this kid, in making a way for the kid. Let me pray. Father, thank you that Jesus offers us a secure foundation for our life. That if we follow him and make him our king, nothing can shake us. 
Because we have a king who loves us, who died for us, and who will carry us through death. I pray for everyone here this morning that they would take a moment to think about whether that might just be true. Amen.